Hey there. So I assume you are running stuff in Docker on a Raspberry Pi. Well, in this short video, I will tell you about a few neat tricks that you can use to speed up things a bit. Yeah, I'm talking about optimizing performance. And yeah, we will start with an SSD. If you're interested, keep watching. And uh, before that, if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. Now, let's roll. Okay, so with this video we will concentrate on beefing up our Raspberry Pi Docker host a bit. So this is uh, pretty much the same Raspberry Pi Docker host I've uh, created in a few, I think a few months ago in a video called the Ultimate Raspberry Pi 4 Docker Host. So the only exception is that this one has 8 gigabytes of RAM and the one I used back then was the 2, two gigabytes version. But but that is the only difference. I've uh, also attached an SSD, but I'm not using it yet. And uh, this is because the goal here is to migrate our system. So this can be useful if you have like home automation set up or already have a Docker host, but you feel it a bit sluggish because, yeah, loading uh, containers from an SD card especially if you have more than a few yeah that can be problematic so we first start by adding an ssd and migrating our content over there so after connecting your ssd via a usb cable the first thing you want to do is find out uh, how the operating system uh, recognizes it or actually is it recognized so i've prepared a few comments and uh, we will see what can we do with those then we have our SSD added to the system and uh, become our new storage. So the first command is this one. So we can see a couple of disks here and we need to find out which one is the SSD. So we can use the utility called fdisk that uh, is a partition manager and uh, it can also provide information about the disk. So let's take sda1 for example. The command you need to try is or use is sudo fdisk and slash dev slash sda1. So there we go. Uh, you can enter f here capital F which tells you the free space so this is not the one we're looking for okay let's hit a Q and enter to quit and let's try another one so these are uh, these two starting with MMC are at the um, partitions on, on or actually those are the SD card so what else we can try it is possible that the disk won't have a uh, UID, so we can try just uh, experimenting. Like, yeah, we have an SD2. And there we go. Now press capital F again, enter, and you can see is the correct size because this is a 120 gigabytes uh, SSD. So we need to create a partition here. Uh, for that, you can press N, which is for new partition, then can you press P as a primary partition then you press 1 or just an enter then another enter and another enter so at this point we try to use all the free space on the SSD for this partition then you press W which means write we're writing the partition table and enter okay so uh, you will eventually end up with this uh, error message no problem it means that uh, you just need to reboot for the partition to be recognized by the system so let's try sudo reboot okay once again this will take some time after logging back in after the reboot of course uh, we can start 
adding a file system to the new created partition and for that we will use this command so this is uh, for make file system for x4 the x4 file system which we will use and the device as the parameter which is slash dev slash sda2 as we have seen uh, this was um, how our sd card or um, our ssd has been attached so just let's press enter and of course you have to be a root as usual there we go so it says it has a dos partition table proceed anyway yes we want to proceed and yeah we have our file system so this is what we can now mount uh, to the system for that we will need a mount point mount point will be basically a folder under the root file system so let's just create a folder or directory like sudo mk directory slash media slash let's call it storage and then press enter and now we need to add this to our file system mapping file system mapping is stored in a file called fstab so we will have to edit that for that you have to use a text editor i will use nano so nano slash etc slash fs tab and of course you don't want to leave the pseudo so there we go we can already see two entries here these are for the root file system and for the booting file system from where the firmware gets loaded and we will add a new system however here uh, you will need the UID so just let me paste the template which we will use and this is where you need to add the UID of the disk now it should have a UID so let's just leave here for a second and again let's try to find our disk via a UID there we go now it has a uid this one so you just copy this and paste it into the fstab file instead of this asterisk uh, so there we go we have added it now we save exit and once again we need to reboot or actually you can use a command to make the changes immediate uh, so we will just sudo mount dash a and this should pick up our partition so it seems to be okay let's um, try a command to see the free space on our system and we should see the partitions so for that you need uh, df dash dash age and we should see that uh, we have our ssd slash dev slash sda2 um, assigned to slash media slash storage and it's pretty much empty so nice so far we have uh, our storage ready to use so what next next we will have to migrate our docker related stuff here so you use the command docker ts just to check whether we have running containers and of course we will but as you can see docker is pretty slow uh, or actually can be pretty slow depending on what containers you are using so yeah i have two containers and uh, now i need to shut down docker and move all its stuff to the new storage so i will just say sudo service docker stop and there we go you can use status instead of stop to see whether it actually stopped and yes you can see stop docker application container engine so our docker has stopped now so uh, docker stores its stuff on the file system 
under a specific folder we can go to that folder and move everything from there so that folder slash var slash lib slash docker this is the folder we need to move to our new storage so for that we will have a single command this one so sudo move the whole docker folder to the storage let's do this okay cool so we have moved all our docker related stuff images containers metadata files whatnot to our new ssd based storage now we need to make docker think that uh, these are still uh, in their original location so we will just add the symbolic link back to that folder so yeah this is the command unfortunately pasted it immediately you need sudo once again and then there we go if you go into slash war lib and uh, check the folder there then you will see that docker is indeed a symbolic link which points to our storage so this is nice we can now start up docker once again and we will see that it will load its stuff from the storage from the ssd so for that you need to issue sudo service docker and start okay so this will start the docker daemon the docker service itself and it will also start the containers just like in case of a reboot so for that you can use a command docker stats which will provide information about our uh, running containers so as you can see they have already started much faster from the ssd and there we go we have migrated our uh, containers to the ssd okay so what next uh, there's a utility called htop which uh, shows some information about the running processes and whatnot and you can use it to check um, your system memory and swap file and whatnot and also the processes so you can see now data is running i have port inner is running these are the processes and whatnot and uh, as you can see my memory usage is pretty low so it uses a little more than 300 megabytes out of almost um, 8 gigabytes of memory but we can play with the idea of what if we are running out of memory well we can use our ssd as a, as uh, a swap file we can for a swap file swap file is basically virtual memory which is uh, instead of being a physical ram a chip on the board is instead a file on the ssd that is getting used by the operating system uh, just like it would be ram actual memory so we can use our ssd to increase our memory available for the containers so if you are running with the 2 gigabytes version or even the 1 gigabyte version of the raspberry pi 4 and while the performance is still okay like in my case where it barely uses any cpu but you're running out of ram you can activate a swap file on the ssd which won't be as fast as the actual ram but will still solve your memory problem so let's do that Believe it or not, adding a swap file to the system is pretty easy. It will literally take only like five commands, or actually four. So first of all, we need a command which will turn off any swap usage we have. Uh, by default, Ubuntu comes with a few hundred megabytes, I think 100 and I don't know, somewhere around that uh, of swap file but that is also located on the sd card so it's slow so we'll turn that off with uh, sudo swap off dash a so this will turn off all the swap files then we will just need to create our swap file to create a swap file uh, you will just create a file which 
you initially fill with um, zeros. So this long command uh, does the following. It's just uh, basically imitates that it's uh, copying a bunch of zeros from a virtual uh, device to this swap file. So the, your swap file will be located on our storage under slash media slash storage and it will be called swap file and uh, we will provide four gigabytes it because this is block size one gigabyte and uh, four blocks so since it is a continuous file this don't really has to concern you much you just uh, come up with the size you want to have for a gigabyte uh, physical memory i will be just adding four gigabytes of swap so let's start this this will take some time again it will fill up that file for gigabytes of five with zeros and then we will use this created file as a swap file so we are almost there okay so as you can see it's done uh, swap file is created now we need to or actually this is just an empty file uh, pre-filled with four gigabytes of zeros so with the next command we actually turn this into a swap file because uh, this is how we configure a, a swap uh, file to be used as a swap file so there we go uh, now it is uh, uh, used as a swap file actually it says that the permissions are unsecure well you can uh, honor this by uh, changing uh, permissions to uh, this one so 0600 and for that you can use the chmod command so let's just do that sudo chmod uh, 0600 which means that uh, will be only accessible by uh, its owner which will be the root user and the file location which is slash media slash storage slash swap file there we go we have done that too so now it's pretty secure nobody can access it with a uh, besides uh, the root user or actually the operating system and now we need to turn back swap on Let's turn on swap and for that we will use the opposite of that command we used at the start so that was swap off and now we are using swap on and with the file name and there we go so our swap should be active let's check htop once again and boom you can see here swap 0k being used out of four gigabytes so now our raspberry pi docker host has a total of uh, 12 gigabytes of memory so this one will probably not run out of memory okay so how cool is that uh, this is actually what i wanted to show you in this video uh, there are some other tweaks um, which i'm experimenting with this with um, and will be probably showcased in future videos but right now I'm pretty happy with these settings already so I hope you liked it and uh, I hope uh, this will help you and um, yeah what else left thanks for watching this video if you liked it uh, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet and uh, I really hope to see you next time next week with another video you're still here that's good because that means you kind of like my video if so feel free to check out these other videos too and uh, if you're new to the channel please consider subscribing that helps me a lot and uh, yeah if you click the bell button you will get also notified about new videos